It is April the 27th, 2024, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Ooh, it's good to be back. Chris here, and with me, Jeremiah and Adrian. Thank you guys for holding up the fort. Oh, yeah, we, have fun. <laughs> well, we we struggled. We struggled with the technology. You did. So, uh, we're now a week yeah. behind on publishing as well. So it's uh, yeah. 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 But, so, so sorry about that, listeners. But welcome back, Chris, to, to guide us back to the <laughs> so ways of glad. smooth production and high high production values. Let's let's see for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Because 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 something technical changed. Just the other day, so I'm still worried that everything is gonna just collapse. <laughs> something technical this way comes. Yeah. So anyway, it is um, a new episode and we want to talk about, as you've seen in the title, odd cameras. Yeah. Who had the idea? I have to admit it was I. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought over the years, uh, you know, any kind of weirdo camera that just pops in front of me, I'm always really interested in trying it out. Mm -hmm. and seeing what the relationship is between the machine and my intention and just the randomness of, you know, a plastic lens, a weird form, a, a format that's unusual, all of those things. Um, and uh, some of these odd cameras I've actually used, as I th I'm sure all of us have uh, over the years. Um, so because if you're a photographer... There is a magnetic attraction to gear, no matter what you say. So, so cameras, and, and I'm guilty of, of having a few of those weird cameras too, because um, it, it, it's different form factors, it's different film sizes, it's different haptics, and as much as 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 I as I say, the camera doesn't matter. It's the photographer and so on. But the camera does influence how you shoot and what you do. So yeah, the the tech yeah. the tech has its has its place. And uh, yeah, weird cameras. Let's let's just kick this off by looking at a few things. We have a few uh, of our own treasures here. So do a bit of a show and tell. And uh, um, let's kick this off with a website that uh, Jeremiah you sent around. Um, six of the strangest thirty five millimeter cameras ever made. Canon now, Zoom DS8. Now, for you know, just to be very, very um, clear, these are 35 millimeter cameras. Right. So these aren't six of the strangest cameras. They're specific to 35 millimeter film. Just for those of you who uh, will get a little bored, because there's weirder ones coming. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Mm -hmm. So, so these are thirty-five millimeter cameras. I like the Co Konica. Konica Aborg. Aborg. What the heck is? Yeah. This is a weird kind of organic design with rounded. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's a wide angle. No, it's a it's a panorama camera, right? You know, this is the kind of camera that I would say it's ultra wide angle. I guess not quite a panoramic in in it what we will eventually right. uh, discover of, you know, a, a camera that actually has a lens that moves. Yeah. But that, that particular camera is one of the few cameras that makes me not want to shoot. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it is, I've, I've never heard of it until I saw it in this article. It is very plastic. Yeah. And it's like, I, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> well, I, I have the feeling and it might take great photos, but I have the feeling that if I if I hold it at its grip and squeeze, it goes creak, creak, creak. Like an, <laughs> you know, you know the 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 creaky yeah. old phones and things yeah, like that. Sure, it's That's like a plushy. It it's like a plushy. Those of you who have, <laughs> and it hasn't know. become a famous camera. Otherwise, I no. probably would have no. heard of it. What is the Lomo? L oh, Lomo LCA, <clears throat> the the. Uh, the one, the one camera that kicked off the Lomography movement. Yeah, this uh, the Splitzer. So I think you could take half a picture and ah. <laughs> combine it with another half of a picture. I see. Yeah, the so Splitzer is a way of blocking off part part of the uh, part of the lens. It's so it's a filter that is half black and it rotates. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you can usually so, take. You can usually split it in either in half or into quarters. Um, they they do them for a range of their cameras. They're they're really good fun. 
Yeah, this is the kind of fun that you could have if you are just determined to stay analog because it's, doing this digitally will take about one second. But right. uh, there's yes, a nice well, random. Yeah. Well, this is actually a fun camera. I, I, I and, suspect. And, and process is fun, right? Yeah. So yeah, just and you never quite know what you're going to get exposure-wise. So yeah, the Minolta Prod Twenty S. I don't. I'd never seen this camera, so this is a, mm. kind of a surprise to me. I didn't really. I couldn't really figure out what the quote advantages of this particular I, camera are. It looks like it says it. It operates with a fixed focus system. I think it's just the design. I don't think. I think yeah, it felt like it's just the design. Of that. It's like it looks like a very early Leica, doesn't it? Like a Leica three A or something like that, or, but, or or something from that age. But it, but it does something that uh, uh, several modern cameras have, and that is a fixed 35mm lens. Mm. So Yeah. Uh, they're all the rage at the moment, aren't they? Fix, yeah, fixed lens, also, you know, good also. cameras, you know, yeah. the Fujis yeah. and the Leicas and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Five on the list, Pentax Auto 110, which... Uh, uh, yeah. which okay, okay, I'll... I'll do the show and tell right now. You I do the show and tell, Chris. Because I have one here. So, so, first of all, look at this... 80s. That's very nice. You've got a whole Pink, kit. Wow. Green. I have an entire <laughs> yeah. kit here. Yes. I have an entire kit. So, so it's an SLR, and the size of it <laughs> is just yeah. mind boggling. Yeah, it's, uh, um, take the, take the, the, so, so it is a proper camera. It has a proper lens that focuses yeah. it. It's an SLR? It's an SLR. It has a mirror inside. So there we go. It works. It it has interchangeable lenses. That is... Let me show you the... F this is the, <clears throat> the 18 millimeter. Let me show you the 50 millimeter lens. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny. Yeah. This is the yeah. 50 mil... Okay, next to my eye. This is the size of my, <laughs> of my eye pretty much. And... It, it's just it's just one of the weirdest it tiny is. little things. So it needs 110 film. I was going to say, on a technicality, set. it's not actually a 35 millimeter camera, it's is not. it? It's a, it takes a 110 film, which is why the lenses can be so small, because the, the, the image circle, and it, it doesn't need to be very big. And I, guess which, the, go ahead. I guess the question is really, if one is kind of looking for a, quote, more professional way of taking pictures with interchangeable lenses and adjustable um, dynamics of exposure. Why would you get a camera like that? Let that me takes... show you the best accessory for it. I have Go. the motor oh, winder. Oh man, the that's motor good. winder. Awesome. Oh, the motor good. winder. So, so no, so there's no battery in it, but you can go click, z, click, z, click, z, with this yeah. weird thing dangling. That is, that's a hilarious camera. Hilarious. It, it is great. I used to have one myself, and it was really, really good fun. Um, I, it is a step up from a lot of 110 cameras because it does have automatic exposure. Would you call um, it a professional it, 110 camera? Nah. I don't think anybody, uh, not not for, for professional photographers. No. Yeah, but, show up uh, on yeah, a job but, with that, right? The yeah, 110 no, cameras um, t typically are made from uh, injection plastic and not very... Sturdy, high, not very high quality, and this one is just—it's—it's it's a proper camera, and it's a Pentax. Okay. I loved my oh. Penta, uh, my Pentax Auto One Ten. It was great. I didn't have the whole kit like you do, Chris, but I had a couple of lenses for it. I think, and um, of course, I, I, I bought this much later used. Right, I yeah. didn't have it from from back then. So. The, the shutter was very interesting, is it? If I remember correctly, it has a two-bladed shutter that's ba that's inside the body. Is that is that right? It's something, something like that. Something um, along those lines. Of, it's it's hard it's hard to see because it's so tiny. But I see yeah. an advantage in going into the field if you're using color and black and white and ectochrome and kodachrome of having multiple cameras around your neck. Right. Uh, that don't weigh a lot. <laughs> and this one, this one yeah. does certainly not weigh a lot. No. no. So, so yeah. I, or, I reminds me reminds me to get a one ten film and. Uh, shoot another can you can you descent. still get 110 yes. film processed yes you can yes huh? yeah, yeah. not very not 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 in every place but there are a few places including i think lomography offers that hmm. uh, well, and a few well it's then that sells the film because i think they're at least 
around my way, I think they're the only brand of 110 film now. Yeah, they're they're holding up they're holding up the torch. All right, yeah. let's continue here. Oh yeah, next one, Horizon 202, a proper this turret pro turret um, yeah. panorama camera. So the 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 lens swivels swivels while you take the photos or it goes from left to right or from right to left um which yeah you you wrote something about that adrian yeah i just always wanted one right so i i've never never oh, pulled right? the trigger on it but uh, but i've always wanted something like that uh, a friend of mine has a wide lux um mm -hmm. which i guess I, is the i the, have one of those slightly more grown up version of yeah, of this the kind proper of camera one. Yeah. With, yeah that's the proper one yes um and uh, yeah i always wanted the horizon i could never for some reason i never managed to justify the expense of a wide lux so uh, it, also it also not 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 quite safe to get one if if you don't know it's very well maintained because uh, they tend to have dirt in the mechanism <laughs> and then the 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 turret moves like with interruptions and then you get weird stripes on the on the picture I, so i had a wide lux i i used it uh for some fashion stuff as well really effectively great lens on it and um beautiful especially shooting with kodachrome and a little bit of light or experimenting with uh hand triggered flash so <laughs> You know what I mean? Having that flash go off at the right moment as the lens swivels. It's its a very fun camera to use, as I'm sure the Horizon is with very little. Um, with Whose very doorbell? Little. That's my doorbell. You can go. You can go. No, on. no. My wife's in there it's <laughs> for some reason. So um, <laughs> Jeff head. Jeff Bridges is known for his wide lux yes, photography. And has a lot, a lot of pictures. Done a lot of that. pictures, a lot from like behind the scenes, from sets and so on. Um, it's uh, there's some really cool stuff there. Yeah. So. All right. Um, so that, that was that was that article, and then you just I kept, put a kept, lot of kept articles. Adding kept going. More links. Kept so going. Let's, I, let's keep going. Twelve bizarre cameras you forgot existed by Slash always, Gear. Always, always good. Um, the disc, disc camera. Oh, no. Now, I had one of these. Never had one of those, no. Um, fit in your back pocket. You know, that was, I think, its big advantage. It was flat. <laughs> That's uh, all you can say about it. Um, you know, very, very tiny pictures, right? <laughs> very tiny pictures, very poor quality, very bad build, and, but very convenient to put in the back of your jeans. Right. So, the disc... The, <laughs> the Fisher Price uh, PXL no, I still have my Fisher Price PXL 2000. That's a video camera. It is a video camera and it is fantastic. It, it shoots on cassette tape. <laughs> <gasps> no. It does. And so it is, I mean, it's designed for aspiring film directors. Sure, like <laughs> so, like five year old aspiring film directors. Yeah, but it's it's a lot of fun to use. It's very easy to use. I mean, the controls are like a cassette recorder, mm -hmm. only it records visuals. I think black and white only, hyper pixelated, and you get a just a tremendous, unique aesthetic out of it. And uh, if you ever see one of these um, that you can pick up at a jumble sale or online cheap, just to experiment. It's worth it. It's really fun. They have outputs for video, too. Have you ever used that in any of your productions? No, but I've come close to it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I've come close to it. I finally, you it's, know... It's a special effect, pretty much. It, it, pretty much. And, you know, you can get these... You can do the special effects now with more control, of course, than post. Now, here's another camera the that Apple I did have, the Apple Quick Take 1. Uh, this is um, a, a digital camera, right? As I came I to Apple much, much later, so... Yeah, I uh, missed this one as well. I had, a, it, had very... This is, this is what I like about that era of photography is... Um, that's in mid-90s, is that digital photography was just coming on the scene and the manufacturers were, like, happy to experiment with form factors. The cameras yeah. didn't look like cameras for a while. And then they no, and I went think that was on purpose, like right? That was on purpose because I think it's like this is new kind of photography and a new kind of right. aesthetic. The problem is these cameras were never really designed um, ergonomically 
Correct. In, in other words, yes. they were awkward to hold, shoot, compose. Um, but they were really, um, they were pretty sophisticated in terms of their ability to capture something. Of course, it's, I don't know, a six, what does it say? 640, 480? You know, oh, no, mean? 320, 320 by 240. That's what I, that, that is what, and I think that was the maximum setting. And it so held actually, 32 <laughs> photos, it says here. Yeah, and not not wow. tremendous amount of memory. No but LCD it, to preview the photos. But it was it, it was quite, um, I think it was around the time of the Mavica. Or Mavica. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the floppy-based so, camera. Yeah. Do, does does so, that come up in here? It, I think it does on one of, one of them. <laughs> I have, I have uh, to say though, there, some of those, some of the maybe not quite as early as the Apple camera, but some of the sort of around the year two thousand, some of the early designs, industrial designs around the ergonomics and how a camera looked and felt and stuff like that, I thought were really quite good. Yeah, you know, I, I miss some of those. You know, and and whilst it's nice to have that sort of classic, yeah, you know, that digital camera with a classic. You know, old film camera SLR type look like you get with the Fujis and things like that, and, and of course Leica M's. Uh, yeah. It's I, I I wish there were a bit more innovative thinking in in camera three D design. I'm wondering if people um, and this is probably probably if we we did a little kind of deep dive um, could find people that are building cameras. Not not unique cameras, but, you know, with a small, you know, you build a thousand of them. I mean, maybe they're on Kickstarter. I don't know. Um, to build unique and interesting design cameras that, that use CNC machines, they can mill it out. It could be a little more industrial feel. Um, and even, even the lens design and grinding glass and all the rest of it to create cameras that take very specific kind of film and or digital mm -hmm. uh, chips, etc., and that becomes it in and of itself uh, a creative mode. In other words, the camera itself is the creative aspect as much as taking the pictures with it. I know, I know a few people who are who are doing that sort of thing, who are running you know very small camera manufacturing companies, and it's it's really hard. Um, yeah. So uh, to do something with a digital sensor it, at those low volumes is really hard because it's such an expense the the unit uh, the unit cost of a digital sensor is is higher than you can actually charge for the camera in some but, cases so but shots on the are other difficult hand, as well because for the same similar reasons but on the other hand it is really simple these days if you if you're good with electronics it's really easy to get like 500 boards printed and and uh, yeah. parts on it um, so electronic projects are fairly simple to do these days if you know electronics. So. If you, it, it's very rare though. You, you get somebody that has all the skills to do that as a micro manufacturer. So the the, the one right. person I know who can do that is is a chap called Dave who runs the Alfie uh, Alfie cameras uh, here in the UK, just up the road from me. And you'll remember I had the little half frame film yeah. camera that he made, uh -huh. which does have automatic exposure and does that. And he did the the circuit board design and got those printed up. He worked with a guy in the States who do, did the lens design for it. Um, Dave himself did all the 3D design and he, you know, he's the sort of guy um, in the workshop at the back of his garden. He has a CNC machine and does his own prototypes and, and, and testing and stuff like that. But to have that amount of design skill, uh, engineering prototyping skill, electronic engineering prototyping skill, in coding one person, and yeah. programming mm -hmm. a firmware all in one person is, is quite rare indeed. <laughs> Um, it, it, this reminds me of the Hungarian uh, photographer, uh, God, blanking on his name, um, who builds his own cameras. He's, I think he was very popular in the um, 60s, maybe, and took pictures in Hungary. But every camera he built was made of <laughs> spare parts. Mm -hmm. um, Stanislav, oh, I can find it. Talk amongst yourselves. Don't remember, sorry. <laughs> so, Talk amongst ourselves. Okay, well, I, I want to shout out then, please, while we're talking amongst ourselves. I want to shout out for Lytro here. Right? I still never managed to get a Lytro camera, unfortunately, but I was really hoping 
that the whole you know science around depth of field that the light row people were doing the light field uh, as they called it uh, was going to come and be a mainstream thing in uh, in in consumer cameras uh, as far as i'm aware they made two consumer cameras in the in the end there was the one chris that you're showing just here which is this sort of yep. lipstick type shaped one um although I remember, it's bigger than that isn't it and then there was one that sort of looked like a a fixed lens mirrorless camera in a in a way um, so the the thing well I, I was trying to think about an angle to connect the we, we're looking at cameras from the past mainly today um to 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 link that to the future of photography and Ooh, yep. one thing that i think we are we're we have now is the form factors are getting weirder again. Oh, so I hope so. I really hope so. If you look so. back, like here's the Sony Mavica, the one with the floppy yeah. disk um, nice. lens on the left top. Now, let me show you something that um, we use, everyone uses, oh. and it's yeah. called a smartphone. And that has the lens at the left top. And it's, it's just a weird form factor for a camera, but people are accepting this as a camera. So form factors, if you look at today's like all the action cameras all the 360 cameras the tiny cameras to to put on your on your lapel and so on they all come in strange form factors compared to traditional cameras um so i think the the advent of the smartphone as a, as a main camera for most people is ha has paved the way for uh, the, for, for acceptance of weird form factors weird not weird but unusual compared to the traditional cameras of the last 150 years i think the, yeah. the miniaturization uh, of, of these cameras especially things like as you say the sort of the lapel cameras that you can just you know magnetically attach to your body and things like that yeah. i i think that's a fantastic thing right just for the creativity of stuff um, you know, there's, if you want a, a rabbit hole to lose a couple of hours, you know, go and go and you know do some searching through YouTube for things like the Insta360 Go and things like that. You know, the tiny little ones and people, um, things like camera movement, a re you know, intentional camera movement, not not in the blur your image kind of way, but you know, put it on the end of a stick and move it and record video. So, you know, that that kind of camera movement, you can do some amazing things. It reminds me of, I'm sure I've told you guys this story before, but I'll tell it again because it's worth it. Um, a few years ago, a few more years ago, actually, now, in, we were on holiday in Cornwall and we were in a cafe and my son took my camera and he took a video of the inside of a packet of crisps. <laughs> I was like, and just because it was like, yeah, it's just shiny, you know, metallic in to inside of, of the packet. And I thought, wow, I would never in a million years have thought to do that. And I think, yeah, you know, and now, of course, not only have you got, yeah, you know, if you've got that level of creativity that my then, I know, let's say eight year old, however old he was, uh, son had, plus the form factors that you get today, I think the the that's amazing. I wish I had or could re revisit that sort of childhood freedom of creativity. That would be that would be awesome. I feel sometimes I feel like I've got a lot of photography to unlearn. Yeah. But, but by the way, I, th I think that if we're talking about the future of photography, I could see a, a, a micro lens, almost like a pill, that you can insert into the ground, into a body, into a, a plant, um, into an engine, and it would transmit the image to a capture device. So it would be virtual. And as somebody... I had read an article this week that there was a surgeon who performed the first um, operation using Apple Vision Pro um, doing just that. They put a camera inside, uh, it was a shoulder, and uh, he did a uh, operation where he was inside the actual um, structure of the body so he could work uh, that close. And I think that that kind they of thing. They made a movie about that in the eighties. I think they it was did, Martin yeah. Short in it. What was that movie called? I can't remember now. <laughs> it was they they inject they they shrunk a submarine down with people and then injected it into a bloodstream. But yeah. the, the for for at least twenty years now they had robots in 
to do surgeries with a remote virtual yeah. thing and connecting that with a virtual thing where you as the as the person operating can be inside the body and see the yeah. blood vessel close up and so on. I think, we're, I think we're getting certainly, there. Certainly possible, yeah. Yeah, I think we're getting there. By the way, in the show notes, I did list this uh, homemade camera builder photographer, Miroslav Tichy. And, uh, Miroslav. Nice. Miroslav Tichy, let's open his website. Well, that, no, that's the wrong one, okay. I think you um, just eliminated it from the show notes. Let me, let me, yeah, okay. There it is. Should, I should probably learn how to operate a web browser. That, that's what that's what you get for for yeah. not for not recording with me for two weeks. Yeah, Miroslav <laughs> Tishy is really really worth looking at his images. I've seen them live, and they are I may have seen the prints. But he builds these cameras out of whatever's around and uses thirty five millimeter cardboard. Film. Uh, yeah, glue and, uh, string. Yeah, awesome. It's a, awesome. De definitely, it's a, it's an uh, an interesting character and interesting stories associated with him because um, he wasn't exactly respectful of people's privacy a lot of the time. <laughs> oh, ah, no, no. okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> now this camera is very weird. This uh, first Leica, which w is a digital and film camera combined. The DMR. Nice. <laughs> Heavy, and, I bet. and the form factor of the Leica S one. Also interesting. Very square, square format, I think. Film? Well, square format, weird handles. Looks like a work of art more than a camera. Does. Looks like a phone in a cage, actually, doesn't it? The way or video, that, or that, yes, yes, uh, yes. Video yeah. makers use phones. Rolex thirty-five. I have one of those. Uh, I had, one, I had one of those too. Tiny thirty-five millimeter. By the way, that cam, that camera uh, had a very good lens. This, yeah. this Rolex thirty-five. Very, yeah. Very sharp. Uh, I this is uh, this is one of those cameras, the Lytro, that I did make a big mistake and buy. Um, oh, I know so many people who bought it and used it <sighs> for like half an hour and then never used it again. Was that it that was bad? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, first of all, ergonomically, it had the camera was based on an idea. The idea was that you could adjust the focus later. Great idea. Like that, of course. Now it's normal with editing software, but to be able to take a picture and then determine where the focus was, great, but why a brick? I mean, you could never find the buttons. It was impossible. <laughs> the screen was so well, small. Well, it didn't have buttons. It had touch fields. <laughs> it things. was just so, the worst. So, and, and then, I mean, the, the, the limitations, if you wanted to give other people, to have other people change focus in your images, you had to embed something from their server and... <sighs> It and the, if you rendered out a photo, I think the original uh, Lytro, it was one megapixel square. Yeah, we we so. could say this is this was a good idea, poorly executed. A wonderful idea, yeah. Didn't didn't really catch on. The okay, the Light L sixteen. Remember that one? Yes. Ah, yes. I, did they ever end up making this camera? Uh, a few people, I think, have had them, but the software was good, wasn't that good, and uh, you had to process the images later on. So this is the weird slab that has 16 cameras built in, 16 different focal length small cameras, and uh, the whole thing was then you doing some computation. <laughs> I installed the software. I I I got the. Um, the Mac software and uh, a few demo pictures to play with, and I think I remember the, the the rendering of one of these pictures took like a minute or something. So mm -hmm. it was from a from a, from a experience point point. It wasn't that. I was great. very tempted when they they um, announced this camera. I thought, yeah. now this is a really good idea. A small camera with multiple lenses that took the same picture, all different focal lengths that you could, I mean, creatively, I think that would have been really exciting. <clears throat> I just sat back and waited for it to be become a thing before I, I would test it. And I, I checked in with them constantly for about a year, mm -hmm. you know, just following it. And it never, it never evolved. I, I don't think I ever saw one in real life. Um, and, and like, Chris said, I think the software was very incomplete. It was, um, it was, it was very clunky uh, initially, yeah. and it, it never went beyond that phase. 
It was kind of a good idea, badly executed. <laughs> oh, and and I think I think just a just a construct construction nightmare. Sixteen cameras. You have yeah. to also, I think them. it was very expensive. Ex I think it was expensive. Yeah. This camera. It's interesting yeah. that some of these things I thought were were great. Like, like um, and Jeremiah, you said like yeah, with light like the Lytro, the, the the gimmick that it had that you could refocus after the event is now achievable um, yeah. well, in software yeah. or just even on phones these days. And I think it's amazing the way the software has caught up with some of those hardware ideas from well, five not, plus years ago. Not just ago. the software, but if you, if you look at our smart, they take 10 pictures for each picture you take and then do the math and uh, the, the oh, juggling yeah. Yeah. of uh, things. If you go and, and switch on switch over to the long focal length on your smartphone, it typically doesn't use that because the camera is not as good. It crops into the normal one to the yeah. point where the quality is where the quality switches over to the other one it's, it's just yeah. it's so much no, it's, math it's, and it's computation the, yeah the other one that i thought that there's a whole category which we we haven't really talked about which is um cameras that are companions to your smartphone so you cameras mean the like dxo1 that's yeah. where i was going to go actually yes the uh, dxo1 um, i, I had the one Olympus of these did one as well i had one of these um I thought these were fantastic and very, very well executed. I mean, for quality, remember what your phone, uh, I don't even, you, your phone had a very poor camera. The DxO At camera that time, was yeah. really, really good. And their software, of course, was excellent and um, relatively. And, and um, it was small. Form factor was really, you know, you can carry it in your pocket, slam it in, and basically be shooting... I think they had a version of a raw file that was very um, uh, compatible with Lightroom, etc. And um, so you plug that you plug that into the port on your smartphone, and, yeah, then and it, it turned your smartphone into a viewfinder. And yeah, uh, yeah. excellent. Uh, this this was something excellent. And DxO, I think, got out of the hardware business and you know focused exclusively on yeah. software. The avant-garde optic smiling face brooch <laughs> spy camera. Okay, that is a more of a more of a gimmick, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, this one oh. again. Oh, he, now now let's go analog. Let's go analog. Lomography <laughs> constructor F do-it-yourself 35 millimeter film SLR camera kit. Mm. So this is a fun for the whole family. Uh, this this is a this is an afternoon of, of a project probably. Yeah, it's um, the, Ikea. <laughs> the Ikea. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I know anybody who's ever had one of these that was happy with the photos it took or, or was able to completely light seal it or anything. Like that, <laughs> yeah, it's so. like, oh, this one piece is missing. I yeah. think it's more the experience of having, of being able yeah. to say, I, I built a camera. And yeah, yes. I think you're right. Yeah. We had, they, did a, they did a limited edition one, I think, that was made of clear plastic. <laughs> <It's> very helpful. <laughs> which, which yeah, clear, very clear, obviously, not designed to be light tight. Designed yeah. to be, you know, uh, 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 an ornament of some kind. But it's a bit of fun. Uh, I know. Uh, again, uh, again, go visit uh, Miroslav Tishy's um, website and follow up on him because he built cameras out of garbage. Yeah. And uh, but the photos were particularly interesting, beautiful. Right. So. It's possible and fun um, to just take a, a, a shot at optics and, and old lenses or Coke bottles and just make make what it is you want. It's a nice, um, it, it's just an interesting hobby. It, it shows, does it, yeah. that it doesn't take a lot of tech to evoke emotion with the photo. Exactly right. Yeah. Oh, uh, exactly okay. right. That was deep, right? <laughs> it was yeah, deep. It was, yes. it was for this show because this show's just all about silly toys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, any any other any last few cameras that you wanted to show here? Uh, yeah, do the 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 hundred strangest cameras, and we'll just rip through those quickly uh, okay. 400 just, yeah just at in the a, end of the show we'll do a hundred yeah, in cameras. the last five we'll just, we'll just uh, minutes. select some of the, our favorites here <laughs> a cheaper okay. banger 1994 little yellow plastic thing yeah. um the adox 66 oh yeah that's a that's a mini um what 120 medium format yeah of course the Act from classic my, pocket. Uh, my dad had one of those yeah, uh, those yeah, are, yeah 110 those are film ones. with a big red button that was a thing yeah uh Agfamatic. Oh, Lots of Agfas then. 
All right. I think I think we'll we'll just put all these links in the show notes. There's yeah, and so just have much have, have fun with them. There. And a lot of these you can find on eBay or, oh, or yeah. you know uh, all around there. And and you know if you could pick some of these up cheap and the film is still available, um, it's really worth exploring because it makes you appreciate your smartphone. <laughs> I have I have one to show you. One last show and tell here. Okay. Hmm. A Ooh, Mercury that? Two, hmm. which which is a which is a thirty five millimeter camera with a rotational shutter. So the round thing you see up here, there's a right. disc in there, and uh, when you when you take the picture, this whole disc rotates three hundred sixty degrees. Wow. Okay. And you change the shutter speed by it's it's a wedge in the disc that you open up, so the oh, wedge like gets an old movie camera. bigger. Yep. But it only does one revolution, and then it goes, click, done. Nice. And and it's it's just it's it's just such a beautiful piece of yeah, it's nice art. I mean, there's sculpture. Yeah, it's a sculpture. Yes. Yeah. So this is Very this nice is one of indeed. one of my favorite cameras. One of my Very favorites. nice indeed. All right, gentlemen. P picks. Picks of the week. Our, it's time for our picks. Let me find the uh, oh the windows where I put these. Um, <laughs> Lots I of want. Stuff I want to kick there. this off with a with a link to a YouTube video, um, and it is uh, a guy who tests the camera from rear window movie Hitchcock movie from 1954 <laughs> that features a photographer and a very specific camera. And uh, uh, this guy first he does the detective work of finding out what camera it is exactly. So he buys like 12 cameras to find the proper model uh, and okay. make and year and so on. Um, turns out it is an Eastern German Exacta camera. Uh, one of the first uh, single lens reflex SLRs. And uh, so it's, it's a wonderful like detective story. And then he tests it and he takes pictures with it and he, he finds the, the exact lens and what attachments and so on. So it is an actual movie prop from Eastern Germany. How about that? Oh, yes, it's the, it's the camera equivalent of an MZ, um, an MZ uh, motorcycle. Oh, there mm. we go. All right, um, Jeremiah, you brought us. Uh, I did. Uh, I thought I would. I would just end it with my favorite bizarre camera ever. Oh, it, oh that's a, that's a camera. I thought that was more of an attachment, but no, it's, it's an a actual camera. camera. It's a sequence. eight lenses. It's a sequence camera. So, okay. <laughs> it, it's an Edward Mybridge with a Polaroid back. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. So that's a very specific camera, shall we say. And do, do you set the speed of the sequence? Uh, I think you can set the speed of the... Or oh, the shutter speed. The shutter speed, yeah. Okay. And then it'll just rat -ta 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 -ta, click over some kind of mechanical um, adjustment that kind <laughs> the of shutter speed, The shutter speed dial is dull, normal, and bright. <laughs> Yeah, one three um, five seven nine. Okay, and and, and the one thing about this camera, pursuant to our discussions, it it is a beautiful work of art. I yes. mean, it is a lovely looking, very solid, you know, all metal, odd design for a very <laughs> specific purpose. The thing that I quite couldn't get is. Why put a Polaroid back on it if you're taking mm. a sequence? Because the sequence would be so little. Unless yeah, no, not much space on these. Um, no, it, look, and I you could use the negative from... It remi reminds me, of, like with these eight lenses, it reminds me of like a weird insect of sorts. Yeah. Has a, anyway, has I thought, interesting. Mm -hmm. This is you fun know? looking. Yeah, yeah great looking point. camera. Yeah, they camera, they yeah. did make them. They're, you know, it's a model. Um, and uh, there you go. That's oh, they're, they're still away. selling at Vintage Refurbished, only $283. Uh, no, uh, euros. I could yeah, okay. buy this. I could buy so this. So there right you go. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. And last but not least, Adrian, you brought us a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel, yeah. Jay Foreman is a British comedian. 
uh, and he has, uh, as he says on his YouTube channel, he makes very silly educational videos. <laughs> um, one of the, the, the one of the long running series he has on his channel, uh, which he does with another comedian, they're both stand up comedians uh, called Mark Cooper Jones, is uh, a series called Map Men, which just if if any if either of you have any interest in maps and cartography at all these are well researched hilariously written educational videos about why maps go wrong and and all, all sorts of stuff um Is, they are uh, so you, very you do get to you do get to learn something you do get to learn something and and it's not just focused on the uk it's stuff from all over the world and and they just have some very very silly videos but there's a lot of thought and effort goes into them they only publish them about every three months or so um and uh yeah you know they, i like these i like these 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 channels that don't feed the algorithm and post something three times a week just to post something and, and, and no they this guy apparently puts work in it this and research and then every three months say hey, that sounds like a like a good frequency is this what would be an equivalent in terms of the genre i don't know if you're familiar with kunk on earth a british show oh so, fe so fellow, fellow fellow minor kunk yeah yeah, yeah yes yeah, yeah. yes and no so <laughs> they, they they're not they're not doing that whole pretend to be legit thing oh. that, that 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 character does. That that it also came back, and the, the other classic uh, was the Sasha Baron Cohen character Ali G, who's one of his very early characters, yes. and yeah. and then then you know Borat after that, who pretends yeah. yeah. Um, it's not like that. It's just downright silly. It's almost slapstick. Um, but they do they they do some great things. He also has another series on the channel, occasional series he calls Unfinished London. And it's things like, you know, it's all about, you know, things, development programs in London that just went wrong or were never finished. <laughs> and why do roads look like the way they do? And why does the tube network look like the way it does? And things like that. It's, Sounds it's, really funny. It's, all it's, right. It, yeah, it's more slapstick style, though, than spoof documentary. All right. So I guess that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, good to be back with you. I'm going to... I'm going to spend some time on this 100 camera side. There's so much <laughs> fun know. stuff in there. I mean, just, I just so, yeah. This this one looks so weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, and they have the Mav yeah. Mavicas and oh, look at that. that oh, movie. the co the compass, the compass, compass. compass. Yeah. A stereo I, realist. I have one. I had one. I me one too. Else. Me yeah. too. Yeah. I have a fun, whole fun box little thing. Never really stuff. managed to get it to work. Ah, uh, spy camera. <laughs> Oh man, that is yeah, lots, a, and lots of things there. This is lots all a rabbit hole for the so, listeners so, and So, 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 Chris, while you're hitting the the uh, the the outro music, I just like to take it's a minute. It's already running. To, it's already running. Okay, I'd like to take a minute to say this is show number three hundred, guys. Yay! Oh, so, oh, 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 oh! Hold on. Hold me. I'll bring us back and and kill the outro just for that. It is episode. 300 yeah yes it is episode 300 so we started this podcast chris as i'm sure you remember in in the the, the back courtyard of your friend's restaurant in Kathmandu in november yes. 2017 yes so we've been running so th clearly we haven't done one every week because we'd be up to about 350 by now if we did but uh uh yeah so we've been running for six and a half years just over six and a half years and we've done 300 episodes so well done everybody and and we're still not famous <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway thanks everyone for for being with us whoever whoever is with us has been with us for 300 episodes we want to hear from you sh sh send, a, send, a, send us a, a, a thing on discord or yes and, and, and yes and adrian will build you a camera out of cardboard <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. And see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.